The omnipotence paradox confronts the concept of an all-powerful being. The paradox emerges when one considers an omnipotent being as limitless, capable of actualizing any outcome, even logically conflicting ones, such as creating a square circle. Some atheological debates use this paradox to challenge theistic viewpoints. The paradox resolution depends on how one interprets omnipotence and the nature of God in relation to this interpretation, and whether the omnipotence is self-referential or extends to God's external environment. Historically, the paradox traces back to at least the 10th century, with Sayadiya Gaon examining the reach of God's omnipotence to illogical absurdities. Later, philosophers like Averroes and Thomas Aquinas also addressed it. Pseudo-Dionysius the Areopagite proposed an earlier version of the paradox, questioning if God could deny himself. One well-known form of the omnipotence paradox is the paradox of the stone. Could God create a stone so heavy that even he could not lift it? The question is paradoxical, because if God could produce something beyond his prowess, he wouldn't be omnipotent alternatively. If he could lift the stone, he couldn't create something beyond his capacity, leading to the same outcome. Contemporary versions of the paradox pose questions like, can an omnipotent being create a stone so heavy that it cannot lift it? The question presents a dilemma. Either the omnipotent being can produce a stone it can't lift, or it can't lift. In both scenarios, the being falls short of omnipotence. Another related aspect is considering whether the idea of logically possible fluctuates in a world with and without omnipotence. This dilemma aligns with another famous paradox, the irresistible force paradox. The resolution to this complex lies perhaps in never letting the irresistible force meet the immovable object. Augustine of Hippo wrote in his City of God that God is called omnipotent on account of his doing what he wills, suggesting that omnipotence means if I wishes to do X, then I can and does do X. Many Christian philosophers, including figures like Norman Geisler and William Lane Craig, argue that the paradox of omnipotence may be based on an incorrect understanding of the concept. To them, omnipotence doesn't mean God can perform any action without restriction, but rather that God can perform any action that aligns with his innate nature importantly. This understanding excludes the ability to perform actions that defy the laws of logic. For instance, God cannot alter mathematical truths, such as 1-1 one, one equaling 2, nor can he create a being more powerful than himself, given that he is already the greatest conceivable being. This notion also aligns with biblical teachings like the one in Hebrews 6.18, which states the impossibility of God telling a lie George Mavrads is a notable modern proponent of these ideas. He suggests that performing impossible tasks like creating a round square doesn't limit a being's omnipotence, since such tasks are inherently nonsensical. Famed philosopher Harry Frankfurt supplements this argument with another perspective, postulating that if God can create the seemingly impossible object of a stone that he himself cannot lift, then by logic, he should also be able to lift that stone. Frankfurt contests that performing such a self-contradictory task does not diminish from God's omnipotence. The paradox of omnipotence can also be understood by distinguishing between accidental and essential omnipotence. An accidentally omnipotent being can become non-omnipotent by creating an unliftable stone, bringing into question its original omnipotence, and more importantly, its capacity to relinquish its power. This dichotomy aligns with the Christian concept of incarnation, which revolves around voluntary renunciation of power. In contrast, an essentially omnipotent being maintains its omnipotence, irrespective of logical constraints, apart from the limitation of becoming non-omnipotent. Therefore, this omnipotent being cannot create a stone. It cannot lift. Further reinforcing the understanding that omnipotence is not about defying logic, but rather performing any task that is aligned with one's nature. The crux of Augustine's thesis lies in asserting that God cannot cannot commit an act or create a condition that could potentially deny his divine essence. As per J.L.F., Mackey's 1955 argument featured in the philosophy journal Mind. He sought to untangle this paradox by drawing a line between first-order omnipotence signifying the unlimited power to act and second-order omnipotence demarcating the unrestricted power to assign action capabilities, however, a being. Possessing both forms of omnipotence could conceivably constrain its power to perform, ultimately abdicating its omnipotent status. 
This concept, which gave birth to an extensive philosophical controversy over the most effective method of expressing the omnipotence paradox using formal logic, finds its parallel in the intersection of God and logic. Notably, the noun logos, commonly translated as word, finds other interpretations. Calvinist theologian Gordon Clark, highly regarded for his knowledge of pre-Socratic philosophy, opted to translate logos as logics, stating that logic was inseparable from God, underpinning creation, and a principle inherent to the Christian worldview, rather than a secular imposition. Resultantly, God abides by logical laws as his existence is eternally logical, much like his incapacity for evil owing to his eternal goodness. Correspondingly, God cannot design a boulder too heavy for him to lift due to this action's violation of the law of non-contradiction, as it pits the immovable against the unstoppable. This predicament mirrors the Euthyphro dilemma, as per theologians Norman Geisler and William Lane Craig, by questioning logic's origin, which God must adhere to. Their perspective aligns with the principle that logic doesn't supersede God. Rather, it remains an inherent, eternal aspect of his nature. The argument pivots on the paradox's seeming redundancy given God's perceived omnipotence, rendering any could-not-live scenario nonsensical. Acknowledging omnipotence's nature and implications, against the backdrop of logical complexities often misrepresented, derives from omniscience's contrasting placement against intricate variables. An alternate interpretation, however, entertains the idea of God's non-corporeal state, incapable of lifting but capable of elevation despite the Hindu belief of a singular God manifesting in several forms. In conclusion, the paradox of can God lift a stone heavier than he can carry is grounded in anthropocentric assumptions that feeds the dual argument model. The phrase lift a stone is used as a metaphor for capability. Consequently, the question is whether God has the ability to be incapable. If God indeed has this capability, then he is inherently incapable as he possesses the potential to not be able to achieve something alternatively. If God is unable to be incapable, his two limitations negate each other, resulting in God having the ability to accomplish something. God, as an all-powerful entity, cannot commit suicide as despite this act involving a measure of power. It also implicates lack thereof. The human who can take his own life is already not invincible. Basically, all beings not possessing omnipotence are practically synthetic built on the basis of other, more basic entities, contrasting with omnipotence thanks to their capacity to exist not only in multiple forms, by virtue of their construction from other more basic entities, but also in varied locations, unlike the omnipotent presence that transcends space and time. ASCS, Lewis suggests that referring to a rock so heavy that God cannot lift it as a part of the omnipotence conversation is as illogical as a square circle. Omnipotence cannot entail the ability to perform logically impossible tasks. So, questioning can God produce a boulder that he himself cannot lift is akin to asking if God can design a square circle. The dichotomy lies in God's ability and inability to lift the rock. God can lift this rock, can be either true or false, but never both the rationality is that for God to make such a rock, he must be more powerful than himself already. The proposition seems incongruous. But Lewis underscores the inference that even whilst endeavoring to prove the concept of omnipotence as illogical, one concedes that it is indeed logical and needs to accept this, despite the irrational path to its converse endpoint and the irrational set of conceptions included in that end. In short, the constraints on what an omnipotent entity can't do is not a reflection of its actual capacity, but rather a knowledge boundary whose absence would confound the identification of omnipotence. Actually, this train of thought parallels the classic liar paradox. If one says, I am a liar, that statement is inherently contradictory because if it is true, then one isn't lying. And if one is lying, then it can't be true. This line of thinking aberrates by perceiving omnipotence as a paradox, similar to failing to identify, when I'm a liar refers to itself, the statement's ultimate failure to lie. Expressing the limitations of convincing, stubbornly ignorant individuals, the initial paragraph likens the effort to teaching a fish to swim in space. Matthew Whittle then delves into a discussion from 1999, asserting that a wholly powerful entity could in fact will itself into a non-omnipotent state, thus resolving the supposed paradox of an omnipotent being creating something it cannot lift this line of thought considers that if a deity 
creates such an object, it effectively limits its own power to that extent. Intriguingly, the enigmatic philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein proposed that our language struggles to adequately encapsulate the concept of omnipotence. In specific segments of his Tractatus Logico, Philosophicus Wittgenstein questions the ability to engage in meaningful discourse about the abstracts of ethics. God, life after death, and human will. These are concepts that, by his reckoning, evade linguistic representation. Wittgenstein views that the perceived paradox of omnipotence is more a language or semantic issue, since the symbols we use fall short of fully representing the elements in the proposed paradox. The final assertion in his Tractatus underscores his perspective. Matters beyond the grasp of our language should simply be left unspoken. Wittgenstein's sophisticated approach to the subject has influenced many religious cognoscenti, including D.Z. Phillips, although the esteemed philosopher himself apparently contradicted his earlier viewpoints in his later works. We can also find traces of the omnipotence paradox in the 6th century as supposedly demonstrated in the biblical altercation between Paul the Apostle and Elimas the Magician about whether God can deny himself. In the 11th century, Anselm of Canterbury posited that God's inability to accomplish certain feats does not negate his omnipotence. Thomas Aquinas extends this paradox by postulating whether God can contravene fundamental principles of logic, geometry, and arithmetic. He argues that God, while omnipotent, cannot create a reality that violates these principles, such as a triangle not having internal angles summing up to 180 degrees in Aquinas' view. These are essential elements on which the very essence of things is predicated. There's an intriguing complexity found both within theological and non-theological contexts when we ponder the omnipotence paradox. This same conundrum pops up when regarding legislative or parliamentary sovereignty, attributed as an omnipotent legal institution with the ability to self-regulate the crux of the omnipotence paradox. Can an all-powerful being create a rock so massive it cannot lift it? Is steeped in Aristotelian science. When examining the rock's position related to the orbiting sun, it could arguably be seen as incessantly being lifted. Factors such as acceleration should be carefully thought out in such considerations according to modern physics. However, this doesn't undermine the fundamental omnipotence paradox. The quandary can be reformulated. Could an omnipotent being that created a universe abiding by the laws of Aristotelian physics make a rock so hefty that it cannot be lifted? In the renowned Enlightenment work Ethan Allen's Reason, subjects like original sin and theodicy are explored. Allen emphasized that even omnipotence could not grant animal life immortality, asserting the unavoidable connection between change and death. He contended that one cannot exist without the other, echoing the impossibility of mountains existing without valleys or the absurdity of existing and not existing simultaneously. Allen, identified by his peers as a deist, recognized the presence of a divine entity. Nevertheless, he persistently argued in reason that even a higher being must adhere to logic. Similarly, René Descartes exemplified such thinking in Principles of Philosophy, where he challenged the existence of atoms by proposing that God could not create entities so undivisible that even he wouldn't be capable of splitting them.